Hi. Last time I talked about adding effects to your effects chains in LMMS. LMMS comes with a lot of effects. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to find out more about what these effects do, and I'll show you some of them in action. The effects in LMMS come from a few sources. These ones up here that don't have a prefix were made by the LMMS developers. They are built into the core of LMMS and they have their own individual UIs. All the ones that start with LADSPA are open source plugins that they got from elsewhere and included in the install of LMMS. LADSPA is a system that lets people write an audio plugin once and then a lot of different programs can use the same plugin. LADSPA plugins in LMMS mostly come from three projects the C star or CAPS project, the CAF project, and the TAP project. But there are also a lot that aren't from any particular project. You may also have a couple VST effects listed. If you do, you probably installed those yourself. It doesn't come with VSTs by default. Now, these plugins are not self-documenting. If you open one up, you're just going to see some knobs, and you're not necessarily going to know what these knobs are for. But I took some time to look up these projects, and I can tell you how to find that information. These URLs should be accompanying this video in the description. For the ones that come with LMMS, LMMS's own wiki describes them. The amplifier, bass booster, delay, dual filter, etc. For the ones in the C star or CAPS project, that project has a web page which lists all of its LADSPA plugins. Some of these aren't effects, only the effects ones are actually in LMS, like the one that makes white noise is a generator and not an effect, so LMS doesn't have that in its list. But like Phaser 2, this is describing a little more about what that does. CAF has its documentation page. Now, CAF plugins, in theory, come with a per-plugin UI with its own visualization, but LMMS, at least in Windows, doesn't use that. If you open a CAF plugin in LMMS, you're just going to get beer knobs with labels on them and not a fancy GUI. But what those knobs do, you can find in the descriptions in the CAF documentation. All these controls are present, they're just all knobs instead of a mix of knobs and sliders and stuff. And TAP has its page with its plugin manuals, which describe a lot of things about these. Now in order from friendliest to least friendly, the LMS native ones are pretty friendly. The C stars are pretty friendly. The CAF are a little less friendly. They tend to have a lot of knobs. And the TAP are pretty unfriendly. You need to kind of already know a lot about audio processing to make sense of most of the TAP ones. Now, the ones that aren't from any particular project, just the miscellaneous LADSPA plugins, these vary. What you can do is look at the interface here and tells you who made the thing. And if you look that up, and the name, you can usually find information. A lot of these, for example, are by Steve Harris, and he has a page with a big list of all the plugins he's made, only some of which are in LMMS. But if you see a Steve Harris one, you can go to his, his site and find out uh, some information about what the knobs in that do. And as I said before, VSTs, if you have one of those, you must have installed it yourself, so you should find the documentation from wherever you got it from. Now, if we uh, just look at some examples of these things. So this is an LMS native one. So it has lights and a title and stuff. But if we add any of the LADSPA ones, it's just a big ball of knobs, pretty much. Sometimes a very big ball of knobs. Uh, like if we open up the calf reverb, that is kind of a lot of knobs. And if we open up the uh, C star equalizer, that's a heck of a lot of knobs. But what those knobs do is mostly described in the documentation, which doesn't come with LMS, but 
it's out there for mostly. You can find the documentation. So if you really want to know what a particular plugin does, you can. In the next part of this video, I'm going to show a few individual plugins in action. Let's look at some of the LMS native ones first. Amplifier. Turn down the volume. Turn up the volume. Turn the pan left. Turn the pan right. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you could also set the left and right gain, which is similar to saying combination volume and pan. Now, the reason you might want to use this instead of using these volume and pan knobs is because these volume and pan knobs happen before the effects chain, but you might want to have the amplifier applying after certain effects. Some effects are what's called linear in their way they interact with volume. And for those effects, it doesn't matter whether the amplifier is before or after. But if the effect is in some way nonlinear, like if it's a compressor, then whether the amplifier comes before or after can be a big deal. And you may need to amplify after the effect, which is why you would put the amplifier in the effects chain instead of just using the volume and pan knobs up here. Dual filter lets you apply filters. The end of LFO tab lets you apply one filter and you can do uh, cutoff and resonance, envelope and oscillator on it. The dual filter splits the signal into two paths, applies a filter to each path, and mixes them together. You can have the mix just be the first filter, just be the second filter, or a 50-50 split, or whatever split, by putting the knob wherever. And you can then use the two filters to get a more complicated filtered sound than what you get from one filter. You might mix a high pass and a low pass. You might mix an all pass in. An all pass alone doesn't do much to the sound, but an all pass mixed with something else can have interesting effects in various cases. Like a phaser is actually deep down made from a whole bunch of all pass filters. Uh, you can uh, disable one of these, in which case it's gonna be silent, which is pointless. If you only wanna use one filter, you can just jam the mix in that direction. That doesn't matter whether the other one's turned on or not. Um, so that's a way to get some more filters mixed in. I've already talked about the spectrum analyzer a little. It doesn't change the sound, it just gives you a UI to display the sound. Uh, the stereophonic matrix is kind of interesting. It lets you affect the pan separately for each channel. Like, right, by default, it's sending the left input all the way to the left output right input all the way to the right output, but we could uh, like zero these and then set these and now the pans are reversed. The left input's going to the right output, right input's going to the left output. And you could also even have the negation of the waveform sent. As I've mentioned before, what the negation of the waveform means is usually something that sounds the same, but in certain mixing contexts, it could sound different. So this lets you uh, mess around with the left and right channels as two separate equations for combining the input left and right, producing the output left and right. It's a matrix, mathematically speaking. The wave shaper effect is kind of interesting. In Bit Invader's case, it's kind of pointless too, because Bit Invader is already basically doing the same thing better. But if you're using an instrument that's not Bit Invader, and you doodle in this wave shaper window, You get something that takes your input signal as the x-axis and then uses the y-axis as what it outputs. So the saw wave becomes this wiggly thing. You might notice that it's producing a symmetric wave up here because this is the center line actually. And effectively you're mirroring your thing so above the center line and below the center line are behaving the same as each other. It won't turn a symmetric wave into an asymmetric wave. Whereas Bit Invader, you're drawing the entire thing, center line up, center line down, so you can make it asymmetric. It's easiest to see what wave shape are done using a sine wave, a saw wave, but you can, of course, wave shape other things. And Wave Shaper is an example of one of the nonlinear plugins that I mentioned earlier. Something that was linear can become a very different kind of shape. 
Applying it to a square wave is pointless because a square wave is only ever up here or down here. It never uses the middle. Base booster is much simpler than a full equalizer. It just gives you a ratio to boost the base by. And uh, cutoff frequency to count where it starts actually thinking of the frequency as a base frequency. If you just want to make the bass louder and you don't need a full equalizer, this is a quick way to do it with just a few knobs. Stereo Enhancer takes a signal that has some stereo component already, uh, which in this case means we kind of have to put it after something that makes some stereo, so let's do that. And it just widens the stereo, making the left and right channels more different from each other, which you can't do easily with the stereophonic matrix or with the uh, pin knob. The other built-in LMS ones are a little more technical, and I'm not going to get into them right now. To keep this video from getting too long, I'm breaking it into two parts. This is the end of part one. In the next part, I go into more individual effects.